What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing on with episode number 11 of Tower of Gods. This one's titled Underwater Hunt Part 1. So it seems like the administrator test I assume we're getting this episode is going to be a multi-parter uh, for at least a second part, maybe a third part, but uh, very rarely do they do a part 3 in any sort of anime. Um, so yeah, hot off episode 10 and episode 9 for that matter. I've been recording all three of them today. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have a conspiracy with the tower and Jihad and what's going on and how it's like, not not everything is how it's meant to be portrayed by the looks of things. Uh, there seems to be some sort of mission to retrieve back uh, Black March and Green April, the two of the 13-month series. Uh, makes me wonder why there's 13 months, but whatever. Unless Jihad decided, I want a new month as part of my rule or something, I don't know. Um... So yeah, we've got that going on. We now have uh, Yoru admitting to everyone that he is an irregular because they didn't have any idea beforehand. Uh, and he's now going to take the administrator's test for a... Uh, it's, it's a tougher way, but if they can do it, it is the quickest way through the tower. And he's doing it in part just to help get um, Raihel up through the tower because at this point, Raihel can't go past this point. She technically passed the test, but due to the fact that she is in a wheelchair, oddly, um, she got stabbed. It makes sense for her to be in a wheelchair right now. I just didn't expect the anime to actually do it. Um, but yeah, uh, what was I saying? Um, because she's now in a wheelchair, she automatically fails because she can't progress through the next test, which will be the final test or something. I don't know. Um, and... Uh, Yeah, so this is the only option that Yoru has to get her up there because she he wants to get up there so she can see the stars because that's what her original conviction was. I'm I hate that it seems like they've kind of resolved a little bit between Yoru and Raihel. I hate the fact that it seems like they're starting to mend their relationship already because that doesn't feel right. It feels like Raihel has something she's still hiding like it doesn't feel especially with the whole ghost thing like ghost passing but not ultimately attending because he seems to have been linked to Raihel in some way because as soon as Raihel got stabbed he disappeared he must have some sort of link to Raihel uh so I feel like there's something more mysterious going on there like why does she why was he here then like, there's just so much going on that I just can't believe her being now... What's the word I'm looking for? I, I can't formulate words anymore. Um, her being more accepting of Yoru and vice versa. Like, I, it just doesn't feel right. I feel like something's going to happen still. Especially considering she is a very hated character in comment sections and everywhere that you look, so... I imagine there's got to be something more to her character still. Uh, but I guess we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, we've now met the administrator who uh, Yoru made his contract with in like episode, I think it was six, I think I read, uh, when he was um, uh, making the contract to in order to use Shinsu for the floor and the tests that were coming up, including the, the Team A, Team B test. Uh, the position test, I think it was called. So, we still have that. And we still have Yuri trying to get in to see this uh, test group. We've still got her trying to get in to see what's going on. And considering how she is on the cover art, apart from her first few episodes, first episode, maybe even episode two appearance, I don't remember if she was in episode two that much either. But aside from that, she's not really done anything, aside from B our introduction to Princess of Shahad, the Ignition Weapons, the 13-month series, and all that. So, also, is Ignition Weapon and the 13-month series, are they mutually exclusive? Like, all the 13-month series are Ignition Weapons, but are there other Ignition Weapons outside of this 13-month series granted to the Princess of Shahad? I'm going to assume so, since some random guy in an episode had uh, access to one. I forget his name, but... The one that Endorasi defeated and just took his sword, which was an ignition weapon. 
Um, since he had it, not our Princess Jihad, I'm going to guess there are other ignition weapons outside of the 13-month series. I'm just going to assume that for the sake of it. Um, but yeah, we're building up to something here at the end of this season. I can only hope it's good because this anime started off poorly to me. I like Just to sum up how I feel about this show. Because I feel like I give off mixed messages whenever I react to this. I feel like at some points I'm like, hype. And at some points I seem to shit on this a lot. And yeah, so the first couple of episodes I was like, I don't think this is going to be interesting. It seems kind of generic and kind of meh. Midway through, I have this explosion of ideas about the world and what could possibly be going on, why the tower exists, what uh, Jihad is up to, like, why, what would he wish for at the top of the tower, and how does that impact the kingdom of Jihad, or whatever that is meant to exist on this outside world to see the stars and such. Um, and now I feel like since episode 7, maybe? Maybe episode 8? I feel like a lot of that is weaning off. I'm just like getting to the point of like, okay, like I feel like a lot of stuff's being thrown at me, but none of it is like catching. Like I don't know, again, I don't know if it's me or if it's the show's pacing, but it definitely feels like the show's pacing is way faster than it needs to be. I think just to fit it into 13 episodes is probably the reason why it feels so fast. But uh, anyway, I'm not going to complain too much more. We're going to watch this episode and see what happens. This is a part one, so almost certainly there's going to be a cliffhanger. I mean, as soon as you see part one in an episode title, you know there's going to be a cliffhanger to something that's going to happen in part two or something. So I'm expecting something to happen that's going to annoy me and make me think for the next week, which is good because I want something that actually makes me think for next week because um, I'm actually really glad that these past three episodes I've done, episode 9, 10, 11, I'm happy that I'm doing these all in one day and not doing them weekly, because, like, I would not be excited to wait a week for these episodes. I, I just genuinely wouldn't be excited. But knowing that I can watch all three together, I know that at least I'll get something out of my time sit, sat down watching this today. So, anyway. With that said, uh, these are time-based reactions. Bottom left of the screen, around about here or so. You're going to see the time before the episode, so you can sync it up with your own footage. Uh, I can't show anything on screen of the show for copyright reasons, of course. Uh, Molebeat made sure that even t the normal time based format I used to use doesn't even apply anymore. They de deem that inappropriate, so can't even use that anymore. Uh, I'm going to count us down 3, 2, 1, play. And when I hit play, you start the footage. I'm watching the official Crunchyroll version, as most people will be. So, with all that said, here we go in 3, 2, 1, play. I assume the same format of Crunchyroll Originals, Crunchyroll Webtoon Productions, OP, yes. I still don't understand the symbolism of this damn eagle. Like, it's cool. I like the eagle. But I feel like there should be some symbolism here. Because I can see symbolism in the rest of this OP. But the eagle, I just don't see the symbolism yet. I feel like I should. Judging by the fact this one's called, what, Underwater Battle or whatever it's called? What's it called? Underwater something? Underwater Hunt. So I imagine there was something about that in the OP that we just saw. Or it's his affinity with Shinsu and him drowning in Shinsu in some way. Shattering of the Rose, Glass Rose. Sign of his innocence being shattered or something. Like, I can see the symbolism here. The rain, the sadness, the somewhat dead look in his eyes. Then off the eagle floats. Okay. This music track, though. Kevin Penkin, genius. Mm hmm. Open the doors on his own, yep. Yeah.
Mm. Oh boy. Oh. Uh. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. That change in. Yep. You very much are. Final test underwater hunt. Hello, fishies. Okay. Hunting underwater. What are you hunting? Hey, he's actually back to full size. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's a dumb looking design. Okay. Hunting for the queen. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. Ah, okay, I see. So, prevent it from... Okay. These are such weird and dumb looking designs, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yes. Eh, just crush those three. The bull. Oh boy. Okay. But why though? <laughs> yeah, and it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Does this feel like a weird test for the administrator's tests for Yoru? But he's they're not doing anything. Like, what do they do to help this test? They don't do anything. It's everyone else that's doing it for them. So, how is this a test of him? Hmm, whatever. Hmm. Oh, for the convenient. Yeah, there's some distrust here building. I don't blame you, given the information we know. Hmm. Yeah, you really do. Hmm. 
You should. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. He hasn't experienced... He hasn't experienced that same loss and betrayal. Kind of the same reason Kuhn kind of wanted to support him. Um, I feel like that's going to be a turning point. It's going to happen. They're building it up, so... Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. That's bad. That's pretty bad. Why you put the bull there in the first place? Anyway, I'm not going to pick apart the whole... I'm not going to pick apart the whole idea of this. Sure. I mean, that's the only future you know, really, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That didn't work. Okay. <laughs> Even the bull ignores me. Oh, gonna go for an attack. Yeah, that went as expected. Yeah, you've angered it. <laughs> Thanks for the English. There we go. I was about to say, are they really going to kill him off? All right. Thank you, Anak. <laughs> well, one did. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're treating this like fun. Okay. Ah, bang over the swords again. Oh. Interesting. Ah. Uh, you didn't know the half of it. Parasol? Uh huh. Goblins are on the move. All right. They're moving out.
drawing the net. I mean, this is the good bit. Well, yeah. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> it's persistent, but it doesn't seem to be posing a real threat yet. Doesn't seem concerned. It doesn't seem that threatening yet. Is this a monster that's the... The rank is I meant to be running from? Like, is it gonna now power up or something? Oh. Horrid feeling. What if the bull is not the only one? What well, if there's more than one bull? Pizza, of course, sure. Alright, this thing. That seems to be, like, working to get the swords back. You fell for my trap. The bull is the trap for the sword. Got it. Okay, I see where this is going. Oh. Interesting. Oh. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's very cool. <laughs> hmm. Someone's controlling the bull. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. This is a trap for the 13 weapon series. 13 month weapon series, they say. Can you break out? Oh, damn. You can't break out of this one, can you? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, it's all going to start unveiling now. Ooh, now you're bringing them up into it. Yeah. He knows. He knows. Okay. Royal Enforcement Division Units. 
Okay, that is... Oh, boy. Well, you've riled her up now. Creepy tongue animation, but... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. It's going to start crumbling now. Hmm. Right. What do you want? Yeah, obviously, what do you want at the top of the tower? It's not what I want, it's what she wants. Huh? Okay. It's a beautiful shot. Oh, damn, okay. I have no idea what that is, but sure. Okay. Oh. Huh? <laughs> so they're using the what? They've been alerted. Yeah. Oh boy. Wow. This is cruel. Yeah. Where's Black March? Where is Black March? Actually, that's a very good question. Oof, rub it in, why don't you? Okay, leaving her alive. Special guest. The bull. We have a captured and I see. Still alive, just. Yeah. Princesses and the 13 month weapon series. Oof. The enemy of Jihad? Well, that makes sense for her, granted. What about Andorasi? Oh, I see. I see, okay. Kill the enemy of your father. Wow, okay. Will she do it, though? Something tells me no. Then we've got this tranquil shot going on. 
Wow, okay. So yeah, Anak and, uh, and Dorothy are now aware of what's really going on here. Is it really just to take care of those two? Seems a little elaborate just to get those swords and stuff back, but I guess it works. Plus, that's big of a cliffhanger. I mean, there was definitely a cliffhanger aspect to that, obviously. Like, what's Endorothy going to do here? Because I think her normal out outlook means she wouldn't bat an eyelid at doing it. It's like, I just need to kill her to redeem myself? Okay, shonk. Like, her character, I don't think would have any problem with that. But I think because it's Anak, she's going to second guess that. Will she actually... I mean, is she in any position not to? I wonder. I mean, what could she do if she didn't? What other options does she have? Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. I'm guessing nothing more. Nothing more. All right. Well. Well, 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 well. Interesting. But yeah, it... Okay, so... We see this going on, and, uh... What the hell is this thing's name? Um... Yugoren. Is that right? I'm just reading something here. Um... Yeah. This doesn't feel like a test of Yoru, though, because it's... Right. The way I imagined this was that Yoru is taking the administrator's test, right? But Yoru's doing nothing in this test. He's sitting there waiting for everyone else around him to do something. Is that intentional, that they're separating them away from everything else that's going around? Is it to make sure that... The whole plan with the 13-month series uh, uh, recollection, I guess, whatever it is, and dealing with um, Anak. Is that just so he doesn't get involved in that? Is that why in this test he's just isolated and does nothing, even though it's his test? I'm going to assume that's the case. Or there's something else that we're going to uh, say about that. Hmm. Hmm. But we also saw Yuri, actually. That's a good point, actually. Yuri is now, theoretically, coming down to the, the testing floors. Right? Because he she just kicked her navigator off. He's like, navigator said, right, this is the only way we can get in without them knowing. Alright, kick. This actually makes a lot more sense as to why they've been trying to get in undetected. Hmm. Hmm. That might explain... Yeah, that would explain why she's been trying to get back this entire time to see them. Maybe she is aware of 
the uh, the sinister aspect of what's going on in the tower right now, perhaps. And that's why she's wanted to get back into the tower undetected. Or unnoticed, I should say. Hmm. I wonder... There's... Okay. I'm really curious as to how End Odyssey is going to handle this, because... The way we built her character, we know she wouldn't think twice about killing anyone else. But the fact that it's Anak, the one person that she seems to have a mutual understanding of the tower with. Like, she doesn't like Anak. But she doesn't dislike her either to the point of just being like, oh, you're just in the way, you're expendable. So I'm curious to see... Where she goes with that. I'm going to assume... Okay. Prediction time. Prediction time. She's not going to do it. She's not going to do it. She's going to at least try and stand up to this... Whatever the hell this character was called. Is it Ren? I'm, I think it's Ren. Um, yes, Ren. And at least we know that Jihad himself has like this enforcement division under him... To sort these sorts of things out. Like, hang on, where is the subtitle for it? Because it's like, there was a bunch of numbers involved and stuff as well. Let me find it again real quick. Right, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You're exactly like the late Anak Jihad. Royal Enforcement Division Unit 67. So there's 67 of these units. One, you are natural enemies, yes. And then pulls out the necklace. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I, all I can say is, I I'm I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen out of this. And I feel like there's more to I feel like there's more to all of this that's going to be like revealed. Um. But yeah, I'm just curious to see how this is going to go. That's, that's all I can realistically say about it. I'm just curious as what's going to happen. Because I would like to know. I'm glad I watched all three of these episodes that I've watched today back to back to back. Because I feel like I wouldn't have been able to be interested in it long term otherwise. Um, but yeah, we've got two episodes to wrap this up. So next episode we're going to understand what Endorosy and Anax going to do. And probably the outcome of the test, whether they actually pass the test or not. Um... But I wonder if the information of, um, what's his face? Oh, God, character names, they're terrible. Um, Yuhan, I wonder if Yuhan's involvement is that in this is going to be exposed in some way. I wonder if the administrator that gave this test and said, yes, you can do the test. I wonder if he's aware of what's going on with the reclaiming from Jihad's side of things. And everything going. I wonder. I really wonder how this all is going to combine together. And this feels like a season two sort of thing almost. But like, there's no way this doesn't get a season two just because the amount of goddamn promotion stuff that Crunchyroll's put into it. The amount of. To be fair, this show has got a huge reception. Like, I think that's the most. I don't think I've seen a show on Crunchyroll get this same sort of reception and viewing than any other show I think I've seen. Like, even major shows from previous seasons, I don't think I've seen 
get as much attention as Tower of God has done. So almost certainly there's going to be a season two. It's just a case of how quickly it will become season two. Because it would be... It would honestly be stupid not to make a season two. Because, okay, you've promoted Tower of Gods. Like, a lot of anime will promote a light novel or manga or some other project to try and draw money in that way. Ultimately, the anime is a money sink that you pay to basically have some advertising and give a little bit of something to your fans who've wanted to see these characters and such animated. Like, that's usually what happens with anime. It's a sad fact because it then means that a lot of good shows that are really solid seasons don't then get a season two because they were just made to promote the show for you to go then read the manga and light novel. But like with Tower of God, I don't think that approach would work because at least with a light novel or manga, you buy the light novel or manga. It's a webtoon. I can just go and read the... How many, how many chapters are there of uh, Tower of God at this point? Let's see. Webtoon Tower of God, Season 3, Episode 65, um, Season 2, I have to confirm my age to what? Okay, I guess, sure, I have to put in my date of birth for this. I mean, sure, why not? Um, and then it just boots me out. Okay, thank you. It's not like I was looking for more pages. Uh, so Season 2 is how many? Season 2 is 337. Good God. And then Season 1 is like 76 or something, right? But like, there's so much of this, and all of this is free. Like, don't forget that all of this is completely free. So it's not like having an anime to promote it does anything for your sales. 78 episodes in season one of other things. Okay. So yeah, it wouldn't do it any well just to serve as a promotional tool because it doesn't bring in anything to. It doesn't bring anything to the. Um... It doesn't bring anything to the tune. Anyway, that's my point. So it's almost certainly going to get a season two, and I feel like I don't know how many seasons they could en end up getting out of this. Uh, they could probably get three or four seasons out of this if they really wanted to. Um. What I kind of hope, judging on how I've experienced this first season so far, we've got two episodes left, which are going to be big reveal episodes probably, that do something, either for Yoru as a character, or for the story as a whole, the whole perception of the tower, perception of how Jihad and everything works. Um, something's going to happen. I hope for a potential season two, which is likely, I hope they take their time with it and switch to 24 episode format. Because these 13 episode formats, pacing just gets, it just gets rushed for a show like this that I feel like has a lot of complexity and story it wants to tell and ultimately just gets rushed through and doesn't have the same impact. I honestly wish so many more shows would switch to 24 episode format. Because it would just, it would serve them so much better if they did. And I think Tower of God, if Tower of God's going to get a season two, judging by the fact that season two of the webtoon is absolutely massive, I feel like it should at least have a 24 episode season to give it at least some justice to get at least an arc or two of the main uh, season two of the webtoon some justice. That's just my thoughts with absolutely no idea of how the pacing is of the actual webtoon, so... Anyway, that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you everyone for watching. My opinions on Tower of God still vary every goddamn minute. Uh, sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it, but that's, what can you do? Leave a like if you enjoyed the episode. Leave a comment what you thought down below, as well as some information on helping me to understand this, because I still don't understand this fully, especially after the past couple of episodes. And don't forget to hit subscribe to see next week's episode, episode 12, the penultimate episode, as well as the rest of the Spring 2020 reactions you can find on my channel. Thank you everyone for watching. Until next time, see you guys later.